You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, General Hospital fans. It's Belinda from Soap Dirt. So there are several unsolved crimes sitting open at the Port Charles Police Department, and one of them, there's a crime they don't even know about yet. Three of these crimes seemingly involve Anna Devane. In case you haven't done the math, in order of crimes committed, there was the shooting at the Metro Court, one, and then number two, Anna's house being burned down, and then Austin's shooting. Those are the ones that are still open, right? And now, the fourth possible crime of a fatal hit and run vehicular homicide on a pedestrian incident. And it's a character that we may never see and whose name was dropped a few times, but he doesn't even really exist except in the narrative. So have they killed off this no-face villain to tie up loose ends for Anna in the sloppiest possible way? Let's talk about it. If you haven't already, please reach down and click subscribe so you don't miss any of our general hospital updates. All right, so Charles, Charlotte Cassadine finally confessed about her crimes. She told Nina Reeves, her former stepmom, who of course still cares for her, what she did to Anna and why. She admitted to vandalizing Anna's home with the word murderer in the spray paint and also to trashing Anna's room at the Metro Court. But Charlotte was very insistent that she did not burn down Anna's house. And Charlotte was absolutely horrified that anyone thought she did it. Mind you, there was a question at the time about the shoes of the arsonist being smaller than a man's, but really they could have just used some random extra or a crew member to walk around for that scene rather than using a paid actor to do it. It's pretty common. And we're going to talk more about shoes later in relation to one of these other crimes. So the crime that started all these loose ends was the shooting aimed at the roof of the Metro Court at either Anna or Sonny. One was the intended target and Curtis Ashford was paralyzed by a ricocheting bullet. That happened in early July. So almost five months ago, and it happened in scripts written by the writers that went on strike. So the core writers and some tabloids and a few trashy and inaccurate YouTube channels that I don't recommend you watch. They lie for clicks and they speculated that Victor had trained Charlotte as a sniper and gave her a gun, you know, because that was the class she was clearly taking at boarding school, Sniper 101. And so these tabloids and and channels said said outright that Charlotte was the shooter. You know, general hospital shocker. That is such a steaming load of BS. And it's clear from the start that she is not some trained assassin. She's a troublemaker that was definitely encouraged and brainwashed by her granddad, but she's not a sniper. You know, she didn't spend her summer at military training camp. So that was July. And then Anna's house was burned down a month after the shooting and in scripts written by the replacement writers. So early July and then around July 24th was the last script written by the core writers, Anna's house burned in early August. I don't know if that was based on ideas from the replacement writers or if it was something where they left them, you know, kind of a list of this is where we think these storylines are going. I don't know how they do it when they go out on strike because it doesn't happen that much. So given Charlotte's confession, it seems increasingly likely that the arson and the assassination attempt on the roof were the work of the same culprit. And it could be this mystery man from Anna's WSB past, Jameson Forsyth, right? We heard Anna talking to Robert about the guy but th- we've heard his name dropped maybe five times, maybe, but we've never seen him. And they literally might have just created him to tie off loose ends because they didn't know where to take the storylines, right? Because this was, it was started from the core writers. And if they didn't know where it was going, this is how they could have decided to resolve it. And it's, it's sloppy, right? Since Jameson, this guy despises Anna and fears she might expose his dastardly deeds, he could totally be the one who tried to kill her in the Metro Court roof shooting because it was a sniper. It was somebody who had deep experience and things like that. And somebody in the WSB absolutely has that skill set. And then the arson at her house might have been done after Anna left, you know, not necessarily trying to kill her. Like step one might have been kill her at the the roof. And then the second one, they were like, okay, I'm not going to try and kill her. I'm just going to try to destroy any files that she has about Jameson. But the files weren't taken out by the blaze. 
because I don't remember if they were in an area of the house that didn't burn or she had them. I think she had them somewhere off site. You guys remind me in the comments. I can't remember that exactly, but they survived the blaze either way. And so Anna had this big like kind of box of info that Charlotte was leafing through just before Anna shot her because she was scared that she was Jameson Forsyth in her apartment. And sometime around that shooting, Jameson seems to have gotten into Anna's house and stole the files about him. On the last episode, the coroner gave Dante a key that he had found in Jameson's shoe. And an official spoiler for that day says that that was a lead for Dante in Anna's case. So they didn't kind of follow up and fulfill that spoiler for fully on the Wednesday episode, but I believe we're going to find out that is the key to her home and Jameson had it, which means he probably went into her apartment to retrieve the files. And that would neatly tie up both the arson and the shooting cases. The lingering question is whether Jameson was accidentally run down by a car or intentionally run down by a car. If he is the culprit in these two crimes and the death by car was a true accident, like he just wandered out in traffic. Somebody ran him down and was like, oh crap, I don't want, you know, to get accused of this and drove away. If it was a true accident, they've successfully tied off two loose ends of crimes without creating another mystery. And so I am all for tying up one of the 97 and one third plots going on on GH right now. But if this is how they're tying loose ends, it seems really bad and anticlimactic writing if that's what they did. However, I would settle for it just to have them done. <laughs> Even if it's not a great ending, even if it's like, uh, okay, it built up to nothing, but I would still take it just so we can move forward, right? So if Jameson Forsyth is the arsonist and shooter, that really only leaves one open crime to crack that anyone cares about. Because I mean, really, why should we give a damn about who ran over some guy whose name we've heard a handful of times, whose face we've never seen, and is essentially a random scapegoat that may be the product of the replacement writers trying to end something the core writers began, but they just didn't know how. So in case you've not noticed, it looks like we are still seeing replacement writer material. The primary writers have not been listed in the credits again, not yet, not in the credits on the show, not on IMDb, even though the strike ended. The strike ended September 26, and at that point, they had taped episodes through the end of October, and I'm sure they had written ones past that because they have to write in advance of the shooting schedule to stay ahead of the production work. So hopefully it'll be soon when we have some cohesion in the storylines as they try to mesh the work of the temporary writers with what the other writers were crafting when they went out on strike and then when they came back and they're trying to like make it all fit. So that does leave one crime unsolved. And as of now, it's a crime that no one has yet noticed. That is the murder of Dr. Austin Gatlin Halt. All we know about the shooter is that it was someone that Austin knew, someone he, he wasn't terrified to see in his home, but mildly surprised and questioned why they were there. I absolutely do not think it was Mason. He would have been scared if it were Mason because that means Mason would have broken out of jail and come for him. So I definitely don't think it's Mason. All we saw was the person's black shoes. And then in a recent episode, the camera panned to show Sonny's black dress shoes when he showed up at the Port Charles Grill to mock and torment Cyrus Renault. I believe this was a red herring and I'm going to show you why. So I grabbed a screenshot of the shooter shoes from outside Austin's home and it's kind of hard to see but they look like blow black low ankle boots and here's me being a research nerd let me explain first did you happen to notice that both Cyrus and Sonny were in black shoes check out the photo Sonny's shoes have a line of stitching across the toe that's called a toe cap and it's common in men's dress shoes called Oxfords and his shoes lace up by punched eyelets those are little round holes that are flush to the, the leather. Sometimes they have a little metal surround on them to make them sturdier. In contrast, the shooter's shoes, if you look, had no toe cap, no stitching on the toe, and they, they laced up more like hiking boots with external hooked 
grommets. That's what those things are called. So if you look, or uh, external hooked eyelets. So if you look at the photo of the two men at the grill, Cyrus's shoes are actually a better match to the shooter's shoes than Sonny's are. It's kind of hard to tell because Cyrus's pants cover the top of his shoes, so we can't see how they lace and if they look more like an ankle boot rather than an Oxford shoe. So if the shoes are a legitimate clue, then the shooter's shoes don't match Sonny's. Of course, Sonny had good cause to punish Austin. He had kidnapped Avery for about an hour. You know, he did bad things where Ava was concerned. Plus, Austin was in cahoots with Cyrus and his Pawtuck hillbilly mob. So he is absolutely somebody that Sonny hates. But of the two men in that photo, Cyrus is the likelier option as the shooter because Austin was about to rat him out to the cops, which meant Cyrus would have gone back to jail and probably would have died of old age there because he would have gotten a lengthy sentence. So Cyrus shooting Austin to me is is the most obvious answer. May not work out that way, but it's the most obvious one. And he could get away with it because right now the cops still haven't found Austin's body. And the longer it is between death and discovery, then it's harder for them to establish the time of death and then to eliminate people with their alibis. So just, you know, years of watching NCIS, right? So for now, I suspect that it's Cyrus and that would tie up that other loose end. And that would just leave Leave the question of whether Jameson was killed on accident or on purpose, but I don't think anybody cares. I don't care. Do you guys care? Let me know in the comments. So I just don't see any likely culprits in Port Charles that would intentionally run this guy down because we don't even know who the heck he is other than he's some past nemesis of Anna from the WSB. All I know is that it's gone on so long. I just want all these over with. Curtis is now involved in the investigation of the Metricourt shooting. So maybe he'll figure out Jameson was the shooter and with the shooter dead, then Curtis can have some closure, tie up all those loose ends. So what do you guys think? Do you care to know more about this Jameson Forsyth or just want to put this behind us so we can move on? And do you see the difference in the shoes that I pointed out? Look at the screenshot. So let me know what you guys think. Drop your comments below. Please click subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss any of our general hospital updates. Have a happy, happy Thanksgiving if you're listening to this on Thursday. Hope you enjoyed lots of turkey and pie. I know I plan to. And come back tomorrow because we are here talking General Hospital seven days a week. This has been Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more.